Josh, am I not supposed to be eating at the strip clubs? <laughs> oh, <laughs> we'll have to have a, a, an etiquette discussion Dang. later in the show. It's just, just don't lick the pole. But I like hot dogs, man. And strangely enough, licking the pole is an extra $50. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Dirty Acres Grill Inserts, made by Jeepers for Jeepers. Veteran-owned, made in USA, and a lifetime guarantee. Doesn't get any better than that for Jeep parts, does it? Learn more about America's favorite grill inserts for your Jeep at DirtyAcres.com. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Dog Show. With Wimby. There will be body damage. Chuck. I like making people laugh. That's It's good for my soul. Chuck. Yeah, I don't think so. And Tony. I think that's a huge deal. So sit back. Strap in. And brace yourself. Well, I'm not really happy about this. And I think you guys could uh, t- tell whenever I was talking about this in uh, 681 yesterday's uh, uh, episode, uh, Roundtable, uh, not Roundtable, our interview episode. Um, but uh, unfortunately, um, the show is ending. This is our, our, our final episode, uh, so 682, uh, which I was, it would have been nice if we could have gotten to 700 or, or maybe even 1,000. I think it would have been great. But, uh, you know, the, uh, the world doesn't always allow you to, to get to that point. So, um, sadly, it's our final episode. Well, I've already built my bunker. Uh, you guys have been making fun of me for not finishing my Jeep, but, well, now you know where all my time, money, and effort has been going. It's not easy digging a big-ass hole by yourself and pouring concrete walls and all that rebar and stuff. Just, hey, don't laugh. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you never can tell. Uh, it, that might be enough. Uh, you know, in recent days, something big is about to happen on September 24th. It has taken over the headlines. The popular show The Simpsons and their well-known prophecies of future events has predicted a EMP attack on September 24th, 2022. So now, tomorrow. Something tells me that Nikki G knew that it would come to this. I I just with the tinfoil hat uh, and everything. I was I, just going to say now but remember Nikki G that that full hat has to be grounded. You can't just have it on your head. What the fuck are you guys talking about? Uh, the end of the world, Chuck. And and, and like and, and uh, like I said, it, this really? means it's either the end of the world or the end of the world as we know it. Uh, an e- EMP uh, attack would shut down the internet, and without the internet, there is no Jeep of talk the world show. world as we know it. <laughs> exactly. I feel fine. Well, I've been waiting on this day my whole life. No more internet. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to love it. <laughs> so, yeah. no, but seriously, this may be our final episode. Uh, I mean, you know, God bless each and every one of you, and I pray for your safety. You know, in the meantime, there's no time like the present to become a paid subscriber. Consider it your final selfless act in a last-minute attempt to get your sorry ass into heaven. But you got to do it today, because <laughs> you won't be able to do it yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> but, like that. but, Josh, what are we going to do with the money? I mean, money will be meaningless on Saturday. Well, yeah. I, you know, we got to got to convert that really quickly into cash. Firearms. That's first. That's <laughs> Firearms <laughs> and bullets. <laughs> That'll be the new currency. That's exactly what that's exactly what I thought about with that $50 hooker. I mean, who really cares about money anyhow? You only get one last shot. Just do it. In today's inflation, that has to have been a very low dollar hooker. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's not a good idea. <laughs> it's, the, it's the itching that uh, is the, you figure out's the problem. You know, it doesn't matter if you have a Jeep, want a Jeep, or never do anything but Jeeps. And remember, this is the last time you're hearing this. And people are going, yay, (laughs) this is the show for you, Chuck, Wendy, Josh, and myself. Wendy's never going to be on the show again because she's not with us tonight. And she won't be. She's back next week. But, oh, it's it's just so sad. There may not be a next week. It's just so sad. Chuck, Wendy. That's right. Chuck, Wendy, Josh, and myself are here to inform and entertain you while we talk about Jeeps. You got it in four low, Jeeper? Let's go. I'm Josh, and on this episode of the Jeep Talk Show, potentially the last episode of the Jeep Talk Show, I'll be going over which Jeep you can expect to pay more for in 2023, if there is a 2023. I'll also be breaking down the cost of a 4XE Jeep and how it compares to other models and trim. Not that it matters, because you won't be able to buy them. (laughs) Later in the show, we'll be doing another Jeep Talk Show, uh, and only we'll be giving another Jeep Talk Show giveaway, rather, and only those who signed up for the newsletter know what it's going to be. Hey, this is Chuck, and I think 
Finally, a listener has enticed me to come over to the dark side. <laughs> oh my God! It wasn't the fifty dollar hooker, was it? Because we don't let like the listeners. Uh, we don't like to pay the listeners. <laughs> no. I'm Tony, and I'm gonna miss all of you, each and every one of you. You, you, you. Not so much you. You, 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 you. <laughs> Local Jeep news, national Jeep news, and news from around the world. It's this week in Jeep. Anyone who has bought or bought or bought been listening for a long time <laughs> uh, a new Jeep or any new vehicle for that matter in the last year or so, you know that prices are still high and inventories are still relatively low. This is primarily due to the continuing chip shortage that has plagued the auto industry for well far too long now. According to a recent online report, vehicles sold between February and September of 2022 sold on average 10% above MSRP, or manufactured suggested retail price. This is because dealers have been responding to market conditions by pricing cars, vehicles above MSRP, making a higher profit on specific models to help offset lower sales volumes due to the lack of new car inventory. Now, if you need a new car and you're in the market, well, then you're likely going to be willing to pay higher than the sticker price to get the new car, truck, or Jeep that you actually really want. What we're seeing an uptick trend in, however, is car buyers settling for a lesser model or trim level than the one they they were originally interested in. And right now, speculators are predicting that uh, this, all of this to extend into 2023. So just how bad have things gotten? Well, The 10% average is just that, an average over the course of the seven months or so that the report was based on. Now, from the list of vehicles in this report, the top 15 were commanding, on average, 18% over sticker price. And once again, top of the list is Jeep. Not exactly the list you want to be on top of, but nonetheless. But it's with the two-door version of the Wrangler, not the four. The two-door Jeep has been selling for an average of $8,433 over list price, which represents a nearly 25% markup. Don't get me wrong, the four-door commanded a decent premium as well, coming in at a markup of around $8,877, or 20% over MSRP. Still, nearly 25% over sticker for a two-door Wrangler seems just insane to me, but if you were a dealer, wouldn't you rather sell the vehicle for 20% more to the next guy too? Hey, you got to get it when you can, right? Pretty much. I mean, like with a lot of things, you got to be in it to win it. So, I mean, get it now or pay more later. And more than likely, you're going to be in it paying more later. I don't understand the necessity of buying a Jeep. You know, I mean, unfortunately, like in the construction world, there's a lot of construction guys. You have to have trucks, you know, work trucks or whatever. But a Jeep to me has always just been a toy or a nicety, not a necessity. So I've never understood why jeeps are going for so damn much more than the sticker price or whatever like i I don't quite understand that could be brand loyalty Mm -hmm. you know i mean just somebody who has always Uh bought jeep and that's just that's just what they do what they have done what the family has done you know who knows and that's just sort of the way that they do things and they go for what they know i mean maybe somebody's on their fourth or fifth seventh wrangler uh maybe they lease them all the time who knows i you know i it's it's hard to say why a jeeper buys a jeep but uh, there's, I mean, definitely something attractive about the vehicles, and, and they're certainly a well-selling rig. Yeah, I agree. They are pretty. So, uh, let me ask you this, Chuck. How do you feel when you drive your Jeep as opposed to when you're driving your truck? I feel awesome. There yeah. you go. And I have a shitty Jeep. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> there you and go. I, and, that and, answers and a lot nowhere, of questions. Yeah, it's, it's nowhere as cool as any of these newer Jeeps. I mean, the newer Jeeps are just so luxurious. Oh, don't you know. don't knock your older Jeep because that it's in a different oh, uh, coolness no. class. I mean, having an old yes. Jeep like that that runs is is very cool. Yeah, I don't even wave back when the new Jeeps wave at me. <laughs> I just snub my nose and keep going. I'm like, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> Snob. <laughs> but, but, but see, that's my point. And, 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 that, and that's what I, I, I tell people. I even told this to Jim Morrison. Don't, you, don't hold yourself back from having a Jeep. Enjoy your life. If, yeah. if, if that's something you've wanted to do, now you have a Jeep. You've got lots of Jeeps. Uh, you don't have a modern Jeep, yeah. uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if it's something that you want... Don't hold back. Do it. I mean, don't make stupid decisions. Obviously, you know, food, uh, a place to live, all the rest of that stuff is much more important. But yeah. if you're if you're doing good and you can swing it and you've wanted a Jeep all your life, damn it, get one. Especially now There's that we're facing what's going on with the EMP yeah. attack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's too late for you guys now. But, you know, it'll make a great planner and you'll just be able to yeah. drag one to your house. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and and Tony, I know that you know all three of us have, ta- have talked about this off off air. You don't even have to be doing good. You can be doing just okay or barely over you know the minimum. You know, save your money and buy some. You know, like Josh and I would buy. You know, old Craigslist Jeeps. They're still just as fun as the brand new ones. Yeah, you you might have different colored doors and fenders and. You know, maybe your your exhaust is hanging off the ground. With throw some bailing wire on there, you'll be fine. They are just fun as hell mm-hmm. in any condition. They really are. And they, and they are an end, put, put, buy one. You know? Yeah, and they are work yeah. vehicles, but what really for a different type of work? It may be your sanity, getting out off road and just getting free of everything yeah. around you. So that's why. I mean, I understand. I understand why people buy Jeeps. It's just fun. They're unique vehicles that are uh, different than every other vehicle out there. Uh, I guess now the Bronco may be coming close to it uh, with uh, removable doors Nowhere and stuff. Near. But um, Nowhere near. But would you, the question is, is would you spend 25% more for that same Jeep if you were to have bought it a year ago? No. No. I would just wait. See, that's, I, the businessman of me says absolutely not. That's why I've never bought a brand new Jeep. Because to me, you know, hey, if I can buy another tool, you know, say I, I buy a $20,000 tool, that 20, that's an asset to me. Right, so I can actually go and make another twenty thousand. If I buy a twenty thousand dollar Jeep, and I, and I understand the mathematics of it, it's way more than that. That's a liability. Let me put this into, into perspective that might change things just a little bit. On average, over the course of the last couple of years, used car prices have also gone up roughly by about 25% across the board across the United States. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, this isn't just a, a new vehicle issue, if you want to call it an issue. It, it's It's... It's just sort of a, the new normal, if you will. So, I mean, that that new that that used yeah. Jeep that that you would have bought a couple of years ago for the same price is actually twenty five percent more, if not higher, in some cases. Probably. Um, higher. You know, this is just on average. Uh, so, I mean, whether you're buying used or whether you're buying new, everybody's paying more and uh, by about the same margin. So, Chuck, this would be a bad question for you because I know the answer that you'll give. So, I'm gonna ask Josh. Josh, do you... <laughs> no, I would not sell my Jeep, even if it was for 25% more. <laughs> do you... Uh, oh, and, and, and it is 25% more for the Cherokees now. I mean, they're, they're high-dollar things now. Uh, but would you... Um, do you ever go out for a steak dinner? Or would you go out for a steak dinner? Well, yeah, about once or twice a year. We yeah, like yeah, it doesn't have to be. But, I mean, you're, you're willing yeah. to spend the additional money, and it's probably going to be a good steak place, and oh, it's going to yeah. be high-dollar. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, Chuck was actually talking about it's not a good investment. What happens to that steak after you enjoy it and you've eaten it? Well, yeah, it's just, I mean, you're making a turd. That's so. right. It's shit. And Thank you have you. nothing 13 to 18 hours afterwards. But if you buy a Jeep, you still have something that didn't turn into a turd. Oh, well, depending but if on- I could buy a Jeep for what I could buy a steak for, I mean, the, the no, gap but is I mean, really- you know, you could Taco <laughs> Bell. I mean, that's a better investment because you're not spending as much money, but you're not enjoying it as much. I'm going right back to the enjoyment of your life. What is it? What is it uh, worth to you to enjoy your life? We, we will go to have a steak dinner and put in wh- whatever food that you really like uh, and spend extra money for that just to enjoy that. And when you do that with a Jeep, you have something that goes on longer than that. And also, too, you have something that retains its value better than the average uh, vehicle. So uh, not only is it not a pile of shit, <laughs> it's, it's something that you can recover some or, or, or probably most of the amount of money that you put into it. So I understand what you're saying, Chuck, but you, you it's going to be a loss. It's not going to make you money, but it's not going to lose you as much money, and it's going to be fun while you're uh, while you have it. Right, and that's the reason I don't go out to steak dinner. <laughs> well, you have <laughs> cattle. That's why I didn't ask you. <laughs> ah, dang it. I, I'm going to go yeah, down a, you know a small I mean? rabbit trail here just for a second. And, and Chuck, I heard something interesting on the radio today that made me think about you. Uh, I, I, it's no... Uh, Was it, it 3G? It's a common, common understanding, no, that, that uh, <laughs> uh, cattle farmers don't typically make a lot of money on each head of cattle. Um, and, and so, you know, like, you know, any average given cow, it, it only has, you know, so much uh, profit in it if you were to, you know, break it all down, all the way down to the nth degree. Uh, somebody's come up with a way to make more money per cow, uh, offering them as cuddle animals. Oh. I'm not joking either. <laughs> oh, cool. It's out there. It's a thing. Somebody is taking cows and renting them for the purpose of cuddling. Chuck, <laughs> this is your new challenge. Oh, man. That's, that's just a great idea. So, Chuck. so. <laughs> 
Yeah, so show show cattle is a is a whole different um, like entity of, of cattle, and I, I did show when I was in in high school. Uh, one of my best friends here in the uh, wonderful, terrible state of Kansas don't even show up to it ever. Um, that's all he does is high end show cows, and these are pets because they have to go out. And they 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 literally in the summertime his barn is completely blacked out with air conditioning so quote their hair will grow because they think it's winter time and he blow dries his cows he washes his cows he blow dries them he clips them which means he gives them haircuts and then they go to state fair like he he just won a reserve grand champion it, that's a whole different thing yeah uh, reserve yeah. grand champion for semitol angus which we're actually bringing semitol angus into our ranch but our ranch is He's for production that, yeah. his ranch is to look at oh yeah huh. and so when the kids come by huh. oh, yeah, they come out and they they pet the cow and things like that and when i was in high school in the 90s in the mid 90s keep the cow not pet it yet <laughs> yeah we 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 would sleep there you know so when because it, uh, i lived so far away from sacramento my parents couldn't pick me up so i would live in the show arena for the week and they were just like, dude, you fend for yourself. You know, and I, I was a child, you know, I mean, I, I didn't drive or anything. So to keep warm, I would sleep on my cow. And, you know, you wake up and you go to the hose and you kind of wash yourself off. And you just kind of camped there at the show at, yeah. in Sacramento at the, at the state fair. And people would come up, you know, because sometimes you'd sleep in and they go, oh, my God, you're sleeping on your cow. And I like, well, it's, they're 107 degrees on the inside. They're very warm. We're, we're very close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This isn't just any cow. This is a poshpeda yeah. cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, oh, yeah. It was. Uh, you were doing cowboy shit, man. That's exactly what was going on there. Yeah. You doing this stuff? Yeah. I mean, this is what Luke did in uh, Star Wars, except he uh, Hans had to cut open the ack ack or whatever the hell that that animal was called, so he could get warm. <laughs> At least you didn't have to do that to the cow. <laughs> yeah. Well, eventually, you did, imagine <laughs> big four H event coming. You know, there's two schools from all over the place. Everybody's walking through the arena, and this kid has got this cow gutted in the in the stall, and he's just rolling in intestines. <laughs> <laughs> Steam yeah, coming off of it. <laughs> eventually, okay. Yeah. You know, and, and we're gonna get calls for giving the proper name I of the, of the right. creature <laughs> <laughs> was used. Yeah. I know the ack ack was that walking thing. I just couldn't think of anything. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Nerd alert. No, speaking, of, speaking of cost, uh, something that many people who are in the market for a new Jeep in 2023 may be asking what it is actually going to cost to buy a fully loaded Jeep Wrangler with the 4XE drive, hybrid drivetrain. I mean, after all, the Wrangler 4XE is now America's best-selling hybrid vehicle, and that's no joke. The 4XE, for those who don't know, is the hybrid system that Jeep is putting into their first-generation electrified Jeeps. However, if you're thinking that you can work the system a little bit, pick the cheapest Jeep that you can find and have them slap a hybrid into it, well, think again, it's not exactly that easy. It's actually not even available on all Jeep Wrangler trim levels. So if you want the cheapest Wrangler available, you will not be able to get it with a hybrid powertrain. So here's how much the 2023 Jeep Wrangler 4XE is going to cost you and what you can get in a Jeep for that price. Now, the cheapest Wrangler with the hybrid powertrain that you can buy is the Sahara Edition, with a price tag that starts at a whopping $55,260. That is roughly $20,000 more than what the base model Wrangler will cost, but you get a lot of extra features in it. First off, the hybrid Wrangler powertrain can make 375 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque, which, to be honest, are pretty respectable numbers no matter how you look at it. The Jeep Wrangler Sahara comes with four-wheel drive, 18-inch wheels, and a body-colored grille. The Sahara trim level comes with automatic climate control, remote keyless entry, and also has an 8.4-inch touchscreen that includes the updated driver information display and a navigation system. Now, if that's not enough for the discerned buyer, well, then you're going to be looking to step it up into the Rubicon trim, which has a starting price of $58,990. The Wrangler 4XE Rubicon comes with 17-inch wheels and all-terrain tires, a 4-to-1 low-range gearing system, and electronic locking differentials. It also has rock rails as well as an off-road drive mode, but is $23,000 over the base price model price, and is that really worth it? You'd almost be better off buying two Jeeps. Is $20,000 worth the 20 miles of all-electric range that you would get with the hybrid system? That's a big number for not a lot of range. 
But the combined electric and gas mileage comes in at 49 MPGs or EMPGs, if you want to get technical, which may be attractive <laughs> enough for you to ignore the price tag. The 2023 Jeep Wrangler 4XE certainly isn't going to be a cheap rig to buy, but you do get some great bells and whistles with it and some enhanced creature comforts that aren't available on other, on other trims or models. Now, if you have a 4XE or 4 by e as Jeep, uh, I think, is calling it. I refuse mm -hmm. to, however. <laughs> we want to hear from you, and I want to get your thoughts on what owning Jeep's first hybrid vehicle is actually really like. You know, you mentioned some some prices here for these uh, various uh, Wranglers, I, and, and and maybe I missed it. Is this just the the 4 by e st prices, or is this yeah, all? Yeah, yeah, compared, oh, okay. compared okay. to the, the base model Wrangler. So, I mean, if you were to get a 4XE, you're going to pay a minimum of $20,000 more than what you would be paying for a base model Wrangler. Gotcha. So, uh, did you have the base model S55-2 for the Sahara? Is that Did I hear that right? No, the, the Sahara mm -hmm. is the lowest trim level that you can get the 4XE package on. Ah, uh, okay, the good. the Sahara starts at 55. Okay. So I was looking at mm -hmm. this information instead of paying attention, uh, but I'm going to say it anyway. So, uh, and, and we haven't mentioned this on the show, uh, that we had uh, Mary from uh, Rockwall Rubber Duck uh, Regatta and Jeep Festival. That uh, was... Uh, a weekend before last, I believe. And if you recall from the interview that we did, the question and answer we did on the roundtable, they basically, uh, you could buy a, uh, you could adopt a duck, not buy, that's adopt illegal. Adopt a duck, yeah. You could adopt a duck, and they would put this duck in a waterway, a multi-tiered uh, fountain type thing. It's rather long. And they've been doing this for the last 10 years, but they, they included jeepers into it this year because, you know, jeeps and rubber ducks kind of go together. And uh, so uh, several people that were uh, on the in the Zoom room, and I, and I suspect people that were uh, listening to the episodes, they uh, adopted some ducks. Uh, the Jeep Talk Show adopted a duck. And, uh, of course, I'm calling foul. But anyway, Andrew, one of our Jeep Talk Show listeners and uh, team member, won the Jeep. What? He won. Wait, won Andrew? Jeep? What? Yeah, see, this has been going Andrew, on. In, what? Yes, this has been talked about in Discord, and it was really funny because Bill, uh, Bill ATX, actually uh, broke the story on Discord that Andrew had won because he was actually out there at the event, and uh, I think I think Andrew had to call him to make sure that uh, Bill wasn't uh, bullshitting him because he couldn't because believe. That's, that's where I would have gone. With oh that yeah, too. I, I just know, I knew Bill. Yeah, I yeah. knew Bill was giving him a hard time, and I completely supported that. But no, Andrew won the Jeep, and it's a thirty thousand dollar two door i'm sorry no uh, it's a jku i'm sorry not jku jlu and it's only uh, it's a thirty thousand dollar vehicle so when you were mentioning these prices i was like oh i need to tell uh tell, uh, tell the, the listeners that andrew won this jeep and get this he just sold his truck and ordered a ford raptor so he picks up the raptor this saturday and he should be getting the, the uh, what did he call it? It's, it's a gray color. I forget what the, the Jeep uh, color name is. But it's a gray like four-door yeah. sport uh, JLU. So he's going to have two brand new vehicles in his Dang. driveway. I wonder if he's got to pay the taxes on that. New he vehicle. does. Uh, we're, we're, oh, and we're going to be, sell that Raptor. I, I was concerned that it was going to be around six grand, you know, as a like a, a 20%. Oh, it's probably not going to be cheap. Yeah, right. Well, no, I, I, we'll find out like for sure because tax. I'm going to talk to him about it. But it's only like two or three thousand uh, dollars that it's going to cost him. But he also has to register the vehicle with Texas and because he is a Texan like inspection and yeah. all that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah. Andrew. This is yeah, great. I big mean, congrats, dude. Uh, that's awesome. I mean, I'm calling him names, and he understands that. But also, too, congratulations. We're really happy that a, a Jeep Talk Show listener uh, won that uh, that very valuable prize. I got to hang out with Andrew when we did the uh, second annual uh, talk show at Hin Falls, and uh, we spent a couple late nights drinking lots of beer. And what a hell of a guy! Like he is just a genuine dude. So I don't this think. Is cool I don't think this is the win. same one we're talking about. That doesn't sound like him. It's not. <laughs> I'm not just, Are you sure? I'm give, no, I'm giving him a hard time. <laughs> well, nonetheless, congrats to Andrew. And uh, if you, the listener, would like to call in and give congratulations to Andrew, you can do that by any number of ways. we got a couple new voicemail lines that you can call. And uh, in the meantime, if you have a news tip or response to any one of our stories, please use those voicemail lines or even our email to, uh, to let us know what you have to say, head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out those numbers and how to reach out to the show. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast.
You know, I know we make jokes here on the show about, you know, things like hiding the bodies and, you know, stuff like that. But we promise we haven't done anything sinister <laughs> with Wendy. She has a second love and it only has two wheels and it doesn't have a seven slot grill, but that's okay. She's on a cross, cross country motorcycle trip actually right now, traveling from California to Florida. Hopefully, I think she's on her way back from Florida by now, but nonetheless, she'll be back next week for episode 686. But in the meantime, you can get your Wendy fix by checking out her YouTube channel full of great off-roading tips, tricks, and techniques. Just look for Trails 411. Hey guys, it's Wendy. Just wanted to give you an update. It's uh, day 21 of our trip on two wheels. Uh, we will have logged 8,200 miles, or a little bit over 8,200 miles on this trip. Um, and we'll be home by the time this airs, but I just wanted to touch base and tell everybody that we're making it home good, in good shape. Also, too, don't forget, we've got the JTS event um, coming up October 15th and 16th here in Southern California. You need to head over to episode 666 and make sure that you sign up on that form so that we can limit the number of Jeeps to make sure we can get everybody through. But love to see you. Love to meet you guys. So um, I will be on the show next week. All right. Take care. Bye. You know, Wendy called in and actually said that uh, I forgot to tell her that Kansas was so flat. <laughs> and uh, I have to say, I I am 100%. Uh, I apologize. Then, Wendy, yes, absolutely. Uh, Kansas is a shithole. Don't, <laughs> don't drive through it and tell all your California neighbors that it's terrible. And actually, anybody that's ever seen California on a map or maybe have stayed in the California area for a weekend, yeah, just Kansas is terrible. Don't ever show up. Go to the north, like through Canada, or the south through like Mexico. If you want to go to the east coast, just stay completely away. It's a shithole. Yeah, sorry. There's my good deed for the year. Through Canada or Mexico, Chuck on the Chamber of Commerce, <laughs> speaking for Kansas. So. Chuck for Kansas yeah, Senate. Don't show I, up. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> So I'm figuring 21 days, uh, Wendy is probably just now getting over, did I leave the iron plugged in, uh, and did I turn off the water faucet? <laughs> See, can you imagine being gone from your house for 21 days? I mean, I'm sure it's a blast, but just what, worried about things I've and what's never going on. and away from the house for more than like three or four days. I mean, it's, yeah, I've never been anywhere for three weeks, unless I was living there. <laughs> That's just, just amazing. <laughs> Gladiator. My name is Gladiator. Gladiators. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Gladiator. <laughs> so I actually started talking about this on uh, yesterday's episode, uh, the interview episode with Molly Mang, uh, Little Cajun House. Uh, I, uh, I've, it's been a year since I uh, took delivery on the 2021 Jeep Talk Show Gladiator, and I had to have my second oil change. So right at about 10,000 miles. Now, technically, they, that was what Jeep was recommending was a 10,000 mile oil change. So uh, that probably could have been my first, but uh, the good folks over at South Fork uh, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram uh, said, no, we want to do it at 5,000. So uh, we're going to schedule you for that. I had a bit of an issue because uh, when you buy a new uh, Jeep truck or uh, JL Wrangler, uh, you get uh, you get put on the Jeep Wave program. And the Jeep Wave program is three oil changes, three tire rotations, and uh, I don't know, a lollipop or something. And uh, I found out when I tried to schedule uh, my oil change online with South Fork, uh, it was going to cost me $97, probably 98 after you rounded up the uh, $99.99 or whatever it was, or $97.99. And a wheel, uh, a, a tire rotation was going to be uh, $29.99. So we were, I was looking at 130 bucks for those two services. Uh, and uh, come to find out, I had to do a little digging and come to find out my Jeep Wave was canceled uh, by uh, South Fork back in April of 2021. What? Which is strange because I didn't take delivery until May. <laughs> what? Yes. How, how did all that work? I don't know. I called them up and they fixed it. And uh, then that, okay. that explained why there was a charge coming up for the the oil change. Now, Travis, yeah. one of our listeners and uh, actually works for a Jeep dealership, had told me that the, they, they have that charge there because 
um, that's what they're going to charge uh, back to, to Jeep for the services. I, and I know they need to make the money off of it uh, uh, as well. They can't work for free. But um, I, I just want to say, Travis, I don't think that was it. I appreciate you sending me that email about that, but I don't think that was it. It seems like it was uh, something weird going on. And before you take your Gladiator or Wrangler uh, in for a Jeep Wave, you might want to look up Jeep Wave, give them a call, and make sure everything is set, especially if it's your first oil change and tire rotation. Um, so I, I went up there to, I actually went to Gilman uh, a Jeep, uh, which is a lot closer to where I where I work, and had the uh, the oil change and the uh, the tires rotated. And yes, I did have the tires rotated. It's it's a good time to do that because uh, I had just got those tires right before I had the first oil change, and there was no reason to rotate them. Uh, so they rotated the tires for this time. And you know what I had today going to work uh, at uh, like six o'clock in the morning? Death wobble. Exactly. No way. Really? Yes. And oh, I was, it was wasn't, it wasn't, joking. no, it wasn't so bad that I would think that it was, it wasn't like full bore, I'm going to die death wobble. It's like, did they tighten the fucking lugs death wobble? <laughs> God. So I said, you know, it's okay. It can't be that. But, you know, I, I have this vision in my head that the, the driver's side uh, uh, front tire is wobbling like crazy, even though yeah. I don't feel the death wobble. And if I don't pull over and check this, I'm, it's going to fall off. And I'm probably going to be the highway when it does it. So I pulled over and checked it. Nope, solid as a rock. And I said, well, the tires just uh, are not in the same balance because they move the, the ones on the back to the front, obviously. And they're just not in balance like the 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 front ones were so i'm gonna go get it i have to go back to a discount uh, tire and then get everything uh uh balanced again but the good news is even though they're uh, necks and tires and they don't they don't sell those i can still get the uh, the tires uh, uh balanced i just can't get them well, mounted and balanced i could understand some vibration in the steering wheel a no, harmonic vibration no. but tire no, was coming I mean, out of balance, wheel was but, coming off i guarantee you that's what it felt but like. the actual you know death wobble with the front axle moving back and forth underneath the vehicle actually mm. moving the steering wheel forward and backwards that's death wobble well, well so to me it, uh, think to of me, a, it sounds like you think just of a mild this, think of a mild death, death wobble okay so i i've owned some real sketchy ass jeeps in my day because they're always like fifth hand piece of shit jeeps that we slap together with bailing wire and stuff i've never had death wobble i am completely blown away that your very nice gladiator has death wobble like what in the actual fuck is going on like i've, I've never had it and i only yeah, hear about it and then yours I've, is brand new and it has it. The last this time I had Death Wobble was in my 1983 Chevrolet pickup, fleet side, short wheelbase. And it around 30, 35 miles an hour, it would go nuts occasionally. And I would just slow down and, and go on about my business. Uh, I have not had Death Wobble in uh, any of the Jeeps I've owned. Uh, but my uh, my wife uh, has had it in the 2003 TJ. I just rep replaced all the, the front end parts and took care of it. So, yeah, it was really, um, uh, other than that 83 uh, pickup when I had one of like 22 or something, I haven't experienced death wobble either. But it wasn't the violent death wobble that you would um, necessarily associate it with uh, a bad front end part. And it, it has to, it was either the, the lug nuts were loose on the wheel, which it wasn't. I want to make sure I mentioned Gilman. They didn't do a bad job there or anything, but they don't balance the tires. So whenever you're going in and having your tires rotated, uh, keep in mind that if they don't balance those tires, you may wind up with a similar situation. Now, I didn't have any problems after that, uh, after that initial uh, happening, and I'm wondering if maybe it was just the tires were cold, and after they heated up, and then in the afternoon, yeah, I don't know. Um, mm. it, but I, just, I don't understand why it didn't. But it's, I'm sorry, Josh is making a face. That's you guys can't yeah. see that. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't have any other explanation uh, for it. I think Josh and I are both thinking the same thing. All right, if you have a tire in the back passenger side that's balanced and you pick that tire up and you put it on the driver's side front, that tire is still balanced. You can go and put it on a yeah. whole different vehicle. It's still balanced. They don't balance it on your rear. Absolutely. Yeah, and le unless something happened yeah. to that, that wheel weight in the process of it getting moved from one oh, side to the other. Yeah, well, I was thinking... That would be the only reason. Right? I, I was thinking tire wear. But but come to think uh -huh. of it, rear tires should not mm. really be concerned yeah, about it, tire wear. Yeah, exactly, exactly. 
And I'll be honest, like we, we mount our own tires out here on most of our rigs because we're always out in pastures or dirt or something. You know, I mean, we, we do very little actual pavement driving. So we do not balance a lot of our stuff because there's just no need to. I mean, you, most of the Jeeps, other than the Scrambler, they don't ever get above 50 miles an hour anyhow. So I don't even know. I mean, even just one wheel weight coming off, turning it into a, in a, a situation like this is pretty far-fetched. I mean, was, I could be wrong shocking. because the new, newer vehicles might tolerances. Mm-hmm. The tolerances are probably so much tighter in a new rig that I, I'm, I'm speaking out my rear end because I don't know anything about it. But I'm blown away. Yeah. Completely, yeah, I thought I thought completely Tony was going befuddled to right now. I thought Tony was going to try and blame that that scratch on the steering stabilizer that I allegedly put it on it. It crossed uh, my mind. I'm sure it did. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it did. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I mean, you are the easy target, Josh. You're the easiest target. Yeah, he's yeah. going to blame you. You bet. <laughs> I don't want to blame anybody if it's not me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, are you, I, I'm, I'm guessing that the, the short term. Uh, is going to be taking the the Jeep into a tire shop, having them go through the balance. If if they come back and say, "Hey, the uh, the tires are all balanced," um, what's next? Are are you going to take it in for an inspection? Or I mean, wh- what's going to be the next step if the tires are balanced and this happens again or something? Uh, we'll we'll uh, when we get there, I'll see. But I don't I don't expect there'll be any issue. I believe it is a tire balancing thing because I haven't had any issues uh, with uh, any kind of uh, marginal death wobble. Uh, I, I I'm a little disappointed in the what would I say the the stability of the the front end because it it vibrates a little more than what I would expect from a new vehicle. It, but it's nothing major. It just doesn't doesn't feel as solid. I will say though that um, I've noticed a huge difference between the XJ that has a lot of modifications made to the front end uh, that uh, in if I go through any water at speed, uh, the XJ will really pull dramatically uh, with the, 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 the water slowing it down. The Gladiator doesn't even notice it um, when I do it. Now, it, this could be vehicle weight. I don't know. But I, I was thinking weight and probably the, mm. the suspension front end parts is the, the reason for that. So it's a very, it's a very solid ve- feeling uh, vehicle, but it, it, it's less solid than what I would have expected from it. And, and I think this is one of the reasons why people put all the steer smart stuff on, on the front end. And that's probably what I'll be doing too uh, eventually. I was just going to ask. I was just going to ask if this has you thinking about some steering mm. modifications now. Oh, well, and I was thinking about it before because, you know, if, if the, the beef stuff and it is very beefy on the gladiator even the sport s uh all the front end components are, are huge uh but uh you obviously can do better and obviously you, you people do do that they don't just spend money on uh, the steer smart stuff uh simply because it looks cool and you can actually see it so uh yeah i'll, I'll probably go in that direction and uh, going with this the steering stabilizer up above uh the the stuff instead of uh, the factory down low or Friends mm-hmm. can uh, damage it off road while the uh, while you're letting them drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're gonna have to keep us surprised as to how this all unfolds. Uh, I am I am definitely curious uh, because yeah, you got you got my noodle baked on this one, man. I because I, I don't know either. It's yeah. really strange, but I, it has to be the tire uh, balance or, or something. But uh, like I said, when I checked it, everything was nice and tight on the uh, the lug nuts. I didn't see any motion out of it all, and it happened once. And interestingly, I didn't mention this. Interestingly, it it happened in a slight curve. So I was making a slight really? curve, and I felt this vibration, and then it, it started getting more and more aggressive. Yeah. And then once I straightened out, it went away. Interesting. Yeah. I was going to ask any that, of the pothole or something like that but nope yeah. what was it chuck yeah uh did it, did it, have they worked on the road because nope. i mean you you'll get some checking on any kind of asphalt or anything I'm, I'm assuming that most of your roads down there are asphalt they're probably not concrete where like up here it freezes so they do everything out of concrete but down there i'm sure it's asphalt and sometimes you'll get a lot of checking and then uh, on a long curve the asphalt will just make because you're you're not as wide as like a big rig or or anything like that, and sometimes you'll be in, you'll go in and out of the groove. Mm-hmm. Maybe that was it. Nope, no, uh, nothing. No, uh, no oh. uneven surfaces, uh, no potholes. Uh, and actually, actually, I think it is concrete. I don't think it was asphalt uh, on the the main road going hmm. out of the neighborhood. Hmm. So um, it, uh, it, it just no issues whatsoever, and it's only happened once. So. 
Uh, but I think just getting it balanced. And besides that, I need to get the, the spare tire um, well, mixed in. Uh, oh, yeah. And I, and I can't do that until they take it off of the, the spare tire wheel and put it on the mag. So, uh, and I, and I, and I asked. Dismounting and remounting. Yeah, exactly. All that. And I asked Gilman if they, I said, you guys don't uh, dismount uh, tires and remount and uh, balance and stuff, right? He goes, no. I said, I just need to work the spare tire in. So, uh, you know, it's fine. It, they've been rotated. Oh, and this is a good question. So I have a uh, limited slip uh, in the, uh, on the, the, uh, the max tow package of the, uh, the Gladiator. Where do I put the brand new spare tire? I'm, I would, I would think you're... I would think the rear is where you're supposed to go with it, but because of the limited slip, I'm thinking I probably should put it on the front. <sighs> yeah, no, you'd be fine. What do you, what do you got? Like ten thousand miles? It's not a full. Uh, no, actually, I guess I probably is. I'm probably around. Uh, I'm at five because the, I had about I'd, I'd I had about five thousand miles on it whenever I got those tires. I, I'd say you're fine. I, I would be surprised if you have yeah. more than a couple 30 seconds of wear on those on those tires at this point mm -hmm. so i mean if you've got a uh, a tread depth, yeah, a tread depth gauge I you can measure the difference between your 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 tires that are on and the spare that has not seen any road miles see what the wear difference is um and you can actually go around to all four and then you could could just put the uh, uh oh, spare yeah. if there's uh, one lower where, than the others yeah yeah that's a good idea, and it gives me the opportunity to buy something else from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's a long gladiator segment, but you know, it's it's real world uh, things that can happen to your your gladiator. And hell, I imagine it would happen to any Jeep, a, a JL as well. So, well, um, I'd, I'd be curious to see if any any Jeeper out there, within the sound of our voices, had a similar experience uh, mm -hmm. to where they went through a tire rotation or something like that, some sort of insignificant type of change in the jeep and experience something like death wobble uh, immediately thereafter so if that's happened to you please call or write into the show we would love to hear your story why did you become a paid subscriber to the jeep talk show i love the show i've listened to you guys for free for i don't know years now and i figured i'd time to give back you can be a paid subscriber and help support the show you love the jeep talk show it'll just uh, help help the show out and and then in the end it'll be jeep talk show my ear holes you know just go to jeeptalkshow.com and look for the big yellow subscribe button it'd be nice to give back to uh, so that you guys can continue on because if they love the show then why shouldn't you why shouldn't you give back just a little bit normally i would say you know go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact become a paid subscriber uh, i guess you still have time to do that if you're you're listening to this on uh, on friday and uh, you can go over there and, and be a subscriber i mean what do you care money's going to be uh, have no point so just give it all to us uh, you can buy multiple per, uh, per, multiple prescriptions. You can buy multiple subscriptions and and do the sugar daddy sugar mama one for a hundred bucks. You know what the hell? And go out with a bang is what I say. So uh, just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and just dump all of your money over there. You know I feel like I'm in charge of a cult. You know where they you you require them to give you all their earthly possessions and then you know you have some really cool things and a throne you sit on. But uh, no, we won't do that here because we're going to be suffering just uh, like the rest of you here. Uh, I already have a throne I sit on. Thank you. <laughs> Does anybody knock on the door and say, hey, are you doing anything in there or just getting a ring on your ass? No, that's what we used to say. It comes in, it's like, are you okay? You've been in there for a while. <laughs> it used to be magazines. Now it's the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. I reached a new level. I'll be out in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Candy Crush. <laughs> Uh, and I never understood how some people can eat while sitting on the toilet. It, oh, God, it, no. It just seems on. like it would be a, uh, an, an endless loop that you get yourself that's, that's into. That's like eating at the strip club. You that's just, how you no. start Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, Josh, am I not supposed to be eating at the strip clubs? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll have to oh. have a, a, an etiquette discussion Dang. later in the show. It's just... <laughs> just don't lick the floor. But I like hot dogs. And strangely enough, licking the pole is an extra fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And uh, can I tell you, I was driving down the road the other day, and I saw two Cadillacs get into an accident. <laughs> yeah, the drivers jumped out of their vehicles and started fist fighting. And I thought to myself. 
That escalated quickly. <laughs> well, that's escalate. not why I'm calling. I'm calling escalate. to tell you I've been to the dentist three times now. Yeah, I know the drill. Oh, All right, boys and girls, I'll catch people. you later. You have a good one. Bye. <laughs> Some I'm people triggered. just I'm got triggered. triggered. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck, are you are you afraid of the dentist? Do you not uh, care for the dentist at all? Uh, I actually have. Uh, I'm blessed. I have amazing teeth and gums. Uh, the one of the times that I went to the dentist, I had chewed for 20 years and the real stuff, Copenhagen. And uh, I had not been to the dentist in four years. It was when I was in the service. And to clear, you have to go to the dentist. So I went there. I had just quit chewing like the week before. And the dentist says, oh, my God, you have amazing gums and teeth. And I said, yeah, I quit chewing like <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. And they looked at me like, you son of a bitch. Really? I go, oh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So I go every six months and I always say, thanks, doc. You've done a great job. I'm good again. <laughs> he just laughs to get out of my office. Oh, I just realized, uh, uh, Josh, I forget your name. Josh has had uh, dental issues quite a few times while we've been doing the show. Born with bad teeth. It's just really. Uh, I got fissures in my teeth, uh, natural fissures. It, it kind of sucks. So I've had uh, I've had several teeth break on me, and uh, I just had to uh, went through a, a, an extraction that there was just no way around it. I, I had to have it pulled. So it's it's uh, yeah, infection got so bad that the uh, tooth was starting to turn to jello. Mmm. Everybody loves nope. jello. Uh, so I I was scheduling a dental I, appointment I, here. No, not, uh, I guess it just last week because I haven't been to the dentist probably in, oh God, 15 years because <laughs> I have teeth like, Jeez, teeth man. like uh, Chuck has where I just don't get cavities. I don't have any problems with them. Uh, and I just figured it, you know, I've, I've been paying for the insurance for a long time. I might as well go and have them cleaned. See, like every year I have a major issue just about, so my oh, insurance God. is completely maxed out and then some. Uh, I'm usually I'm usually coming out of pocket uh, at, at least a thousand bucks a year for for one dental issue or another. So it's it's like yeah, it, I, I hate the dentist. But it comes from uh, it comes from years of orthodontic work when I was young. So I I have one chipped tooth, and uh, it was when I was uh, much younger. My brother and I kind of lived down on the River Delta, um, kind of towards Stockton, California, and um, I had a Mastercraft boat. Uh, and I was probably, I don't know, early twenties, much, much younger. And, uh, we had one of those, um, what are those tubes, but you're supposed to be able to put like eight people on them. They're very big and they're, they're like solid in the center. You know, they're not just a big inner tube. It's just this big thing. And it was very windy that day. So I told my brother, I says, Hey, you're going to go with the wind. And then you're going to do a big sweep and you're going to hit me on the swell and you're going to get me to pop up and I'm going to catch the wind. So he did. And it had a 351 in it, you know, big V8 motor. So when I jumped with, and I was the only one on the tube and I jumped and he hammered it and the wind caught me and turned me into a freaking parasail. <laughs> so I went up like 15, 20 feet and he kept going and I was having a great time. He undid the throttle. I came down and chomped on my mouth so much i split my oh. tooth and i went home and took a pair took a, a piece of sandpaper and sanded it off and it's fine it's been like that ever since but that's the only tooth issue that i've ever had <laughs> Good Lord. i think i just saw well a video of that on well america's, uh, america's funniest videos but uh, yeah <laughs> that was uh it's that was a testicle and that testicle had to be sanded down so <laughs> Ah, no, that, that, story, that story was not. Never mind. <laughs> this segment of the show is brought to you by Lug Nuts. There's nothing like Lug Nuts to secure a wheel to a Jeep. Get yours now, and be sure to ask for genuine Lug brand nuts for your Jeep wheels. That's Lug Nuts. You know, I'm just going to pretend we're going to be okay and tell you that coming up next week, I know, uh, on episode 685... I know. Uh, Mike Hallmark uh, with uh, HellwigProducts.com. We've, uh, I think we've uh, had Mike on again. Uh, not on again. We're having Mike on again. And uh, the thing that I always remember is they sell a leaf spring repair kit. And it's, it's just to get you off the trail. But Mike uh, uh, unofficially knows of people that uh, fixed it on the trail and are st still using it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's it's good. It, they just don't want the liability for it. So you know, Chuck, I would, you know, actually you would be the perfect person to have one of these things because uh, if you yeah. broke a leaf spring off uh, off road, you're still leaf spring on everything, right? You didn't switch the coils on the uh, on the scrambler, did you? Everything. Nope. Everything's leaf sprung. I I love them. I think they do an amazing job if done right. Yeah. Yeah, they're uh, they're a lot uh, more Absolutely. stable. Yeah, they're a lot more stable uh, than uh, the coils, and uh, you don't. Uh, I think you ha- you do have track bars, but you don't necessarily have to have track bars uh, with leaf springs, at least in the rear. Uh, the leaf? No, the leaf is your track bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you don't have to have any of that extracurricular crap. You just have leaf springs, and you know if you do a spring over axle, which is called an SOA, you can get an amazing amount of travel. Like even on my little CJ five, it's it's a SOA. And I've got three feet. I mean, it it gets a lot of articulation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, I've done right. Before, I'll, I'll say it again. I've seen uh, I've seen leaf sprung uh, uh, jeeps are uh, uh, out articulate an, another you know coil over jeep on an RTI ramp. Yep, and I've broken springs. Yeah, I've oh. I've done it. It is not. I've seen it. Uh, it's not very pleasant. No. Caller number three. Are you kidding? Let's see. There's Steve-O, he's a listener. Luton Lenny, he's a listener. And and Chuck. That's three listeners. Oh, wait, Chuck can't call. Hey, maybe it's me. <laughs> anyway, good luck to all those people on Discord. Later. Uh, you know, I'm glad he called in and, and reminded me about this. So uh, we did a bolt lock giveaway, uh, not last week, but the week prior. And there was a mix-up. It was my mistake. I, I actually published the wrong. Uh, the, well, I actually re- uh, published the Friday Monday episodes out of order. So I went back and fixed it. So you guys may not have heard the actual Friday episode, and uh, it, that's the one where we had the giveaway for bolt lock. It's a a, a hood latch or hood lock for uh, the JL or, or JT. And uh, we have not had. I think uh, it had to be. We needed uh, caller number five. We have not had enough callers to win that bolt lock uh, lock. You gotta be shitting me. Nope. And How I, is that? And, even and the only reason, what that yeah, means? it just has to be because of the out of order publication. Because people listened to the Friday episode, but it was really the Monday episode, and then uh, you know that that didn't have the giveaway on it. And when I put it back, it's just confusing. So my apologies, but that does mean that we still have a, a giveaway in play. So uh, we've had a lot of calls for the, the Tuffy um, uh, giveaway and a great uh, under uh, seat uh, drawer that you can lock. And it's really nice. Uh, and uh, we'll be uh, uh, saying the, who won that uh, probably uh, next week. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the bolt lock has not, uh, we had, do not have enough calls for it yet. So call in. The and speaking of... Sound, the <laughs> frantic sound of, of cell phones being viciously and quickly pulled out of pockets, fumbling for a phone number really quickly. I, I, I can yeah. hear it all oh, over the place. Good point. We have new numbers, so go over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and look up the call-in, I'm sorry, the giveaway number, because we have a specific number for the giveaways now. All right, speaking of giveaways, Chuck, we got something to give away tonight, don't we? Yeah, we do. Um, it's the Dirty Acres inserts from CJ... Yeah, from CJ's to Gladiators and everything in between, Dirty Acres is a one-stop shop for your radiator protection needs. That's right, with hundreds of designs available on their website and over 30,000 custom design options, there is something for every Jeeper to fit every Jeep theme. And something that I love 100%, with humble beginnings of spray paint, some perforated aluminum, and a garage, Dirty Acres has quickly risen to be the industry leader in Jeep radiator protection. That's right. Check out the design options at DirtyAcres.com. And as a bonus, they're offering Jeep Talk Show listeners, that, that's you, by the way, 10% off through the month of October. So all of you Jeep Talk Show listeners out there, head over to Dirty Acres. You get 10% off through the month of October. All you got to do is use the code JTS2022 at checkout. And now we come to the part that you need to know uh, to, to win this giveaway item. It is uh, the uh, giveaway item, which is one standard design grill insert. And they have a lot of different uh, designs over there, but uh, nothing uh, custom. Yeah, yeah, nothing lots. custom. So one standard design grill insert. And you're going to need to know the phrase that pays. This is the phrase that you have to say exactly. Uh, it is Jeep Wave from Texas. And so Jeep Wave from Texas. I did it twice right, I think, didn't I? Is that correct? Josh, you yeah. read it. 
I know twice in a row. That's a record, I think. <laughs> yeah. Or you read Jeep it. Jeep Wave it? from Texas. Jeep Wave from Texas is the phrase to pay. There we go. And you have to be caller number Ocho. I'm sorry, eight. <laughs> the Ocho. <laughs> caller number eight. So we're gonna we're gonna hope more than a few people call in because we're gonna publish this at the right time. And and you gotta call in on Friday, you know. Uh, and you may never know you want it because you know end of the world type thing or at least it's the end of the world as uh, as we know it and i feel fine (laughs) so far we'll see you must be 18 years of age or older your mailing address must be in the continental united states you may only call in once per giveaway any required word or phrase must be said exactly and completely the first time your call must include your caller id one chance to win per individual per giveaway all these rules must be followed unless otherwise stated failure to follow these rules will disqualify you from being eligible for the giveaway we will contact you with a text message at the number you called from good luck jeeper Thank you for Dirty Acres for being one of our uh, repeating sponsor giveaway uh, uh, companies. And that means we'll be uh, seeing more things coming from uh, Dirty Acres in the future. This is Randy from Florida. I want to make a formal complaint. Um, this is for Chuck you, Josh. and Wendy have not been on the show. I don't know where all my money's going from that subscription. So I feel <laughs> like I'm getting ripped off. I mean, at least they could do is like call in, leave us a little blurb or something. I mean, hell, that. Kenny G guy does it every time I turn on the damn show, and he's awful. Well, anyway, I want my subscription money back. See you. <laughs> well, the the bad news is, uh, well, I actually, it's not bad news. We'll get the check in the mail to you today. If it never arrives there because the world ends, eh, you'll understand. Something you need to understand is we're inviting you, the listener. If this is your first time to the Jeep Talk Show, you can do this too. Come be a part of the show as we record an episode on Tuesdays. It's our Tuesday roundtable episodes where we invite every Jeeper we can to come around the world's biggest roundtable of Jeepers to help us record an episode of the Jeep Talk Show. And who knows, we may have a celebrity guest pop in for a little bit of Q&A for a little bit there There's all kinds of fun that's happening on our Tuesday Roundtable episodes, and you can be a part of it as well. How can you do that? Well, the best way to get that information is by signing up for our newsletter. Head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and sign up for the newsletter today. The Jeep Talk Show newsletter comes from us to you just one time a week. We're not going to sell your information. You don't get spammed. And in that newsletter is a ton of great information about who we're talking to, what we're giving away and when, and all kinds of great stuff about what's happening here on the show. It's the Jeep Talk Show newsletter. Head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and sign up today. Well, Jeeper, looks like this episode of the Jeep Talk Show has come to the end of the trail. But we've got another episode coming up right around the corner. Until then, be sure to invite a friend, co-worker, or even a complete stranger. Best. And have them listen to the show. And as always, thank you for listening to the world's most downloaded Jeep podcast. Jeep Talk Show is the place to be. Good Jeep living is the life for me. Trails spreading out so far and wide. Keep your ear holes open and put some Jeep Talk Show inside. Oh, that that ended poorly. (laughs) Podcasting since 2010.